Welcome to a prospective roundtable of the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm Tom Lee, an associate editor of the journal, and today I'll be here with two of my colleagues discussing a trial that's just being released at the journal's website, the Syntax trial, which compares the impact of coronary artery bypass graft surgery and percutaneous coronary intervention in patients with severe coronary disease. Uh, on my right is Dr. David Hillis, Chairman of Medicine at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio. And on my left is Dr. Elizabeth Nabel, who's Director of the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. Welcome to our prospective roundtable, and thank you for your insights today. So Dave, uh, let's start by having you give a high-level summary of the methods and results of this trial. Uh, this was an international uh, multi-center a randomized controlled comparison of bypass surgery, cabbage, versus PCI with drug eluding stents in 1,800 patients, all of them with left main or three vessel coronary artery disease. They were randomized, as I mentioned, to one of those two therapies. They were then followed for one year, 12 months. And during that 12 months, the authors looked for an adverse event. Adverse events were defined as one of four. Number one, all-cause death. Number two, myocardial infarction. Number three, stroke. And number four, repeat revascularization. So it was a combined endpoint of any one of those four events occurring within 12 months of randomization. The main bottom line results of the study was that at one year, about 12% of the cabbage patients had had one of these four adverse events. In contrast, 18% of the PCI patients had had one of those adverse events. So the bottom line conclusion of the authors was that cabbage remains the standard of care for patients with left main and three vessel coronary artery disease. Well, for people who just read the last couple lines of an abstract, that would be the message they walk away with, is that cabbage seems to be the better approach. But it's more complicated than that. And Betsy, why don't you help us pick apart the outcomes that were used in this trial a little bit more? If we look at the primary endpoint, which Dr. Hillis articulated, was a combination of death, MI, stroke, and the need for revascularization. If we drill down further, the, there was no difference between the two groups in death, MI, and stroke at one year. The primary endpoint was really driven by an increased need for revascularization in the PCI group. So that it is an important distinction that we must remember. Furthermore, if we look at the complication rate, there was a 1.6% higher incidence of stroke in the cabbage group compared to the PCI group. Dave, I'm going to ask you, make that argument that cabbage is the standard of care, the first choice for patients with severe coronary disease. Uh, Tom, I think that for patients with left main and three vessel disease, cabbage is certainly still the treatment of choice. The more complex the coronary anatomy, that is the higher the syntax score, the better the patients did with cabbage as opposed to PCI. If the syntax score was low, the two therapies seemed similar to one another. Now secondly, I think it is important that patients who undergo cabbage be treated with intensive medical therapy. One of the reasons that the stroke rate may have been higher in the cabbage patients than in those randomized to PCI was that the cabbage patients were not treated as intensively with platelet inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, and statins. So if the patients go to surgery, one should not neglect their medical therapy. And Betsy, the case for thinking first about coronary intervention? I think that there are patients who have complex coronary anatomy who would prefer to undergo PCI. Uh, they would prefer to uh, accept the possibility of requiring a repeat revascularization, but do not want to subject themselves to an increased risk for stroke or to an increased recovery time that might occur from a sternotomy. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, cost uh, and quality of life might be important issues that would sway them towards preferring PCI. So in the real world currently, 
I guess, one reason why a lot of patients are getting the strategy not recommended by the conclusions that is going right to angioplasty is the decisions are being made while the patient's lying on the table. Uh, but in this case, there is time to step back and weigh both. Absolutely. I think it's an important point uh, of the study, and that is that th th what they referred to as a quote-unquote heart team sat down and in a very detailed fashion did a complete and thorough evaluation of each patient, including the patient's angiogram, after, and this team was composed of a cardiac surgeon and an interventional cardiologist. And they came to a consensus agreement on which of the two therapies would be better for that individual patient. In other words, the intervention was not done at the same time or linked closely in time to the angiogram. 